So welcome to our magnet sim, a continuous lesson. We have had two lessons so far. And uh, today I want us to start by looking at the the domain theory of magnet sim. You know a theory is a presented set of uh, ideas or explanation somebody gives regarding a certain phenomena. Uh, it is uh, open to discussion. You can still agree with that person or you still differ with that person. That's why we have many theories. The theory of evolution, that is how uh, Charles Darwin tried to explain the existence of uh, human beings. Uh, in geography, we have the theory uh, that it tries to explain why the earth is, uh, or I mean the shape of the earth or the existence of the earth. You know, there are many pr uh, theories presented here. Uh, in physics, we have two theories in your um, high school level. We have the theory of uh, magnetism, uh, which we are supposed to explain why ma uh, some materials are magnetic, others are not. Why you can magnetize certain materials, but you cannot magnetize others. It is uh, a theory that has been presented to you. You as a physics student or a physics teacher, you can still uh, get you know serious with physics and you come up with your own theory or you come and confirm this uh, domain theory. Another theory uh, is, is a theory in form for electronics. You, it, 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 you are, or it will be your last uh, topic in physics form for. Mm, a theory that you will be used to explain why certain uh, materials are conductors, others are semiconductors, and others are insulators. So when you get there, you will explain that uh, particular theory. Um, this one, you have been told, it is also known as molecular theory of magnetism. And, uh, you know, there are materials, for example, iron and steel, which are magnetic, and we have others like aluminium, which is not magnetic. Now, let's see, why is iron magnetic? Aluminium is not. In this theory, we will try to explain it. So, a magnetic material has small um, particles called uh, dipoles. These dipoles are found in packets called domains. So, our area of concern is not the domain. Our area of concern is the tiny particles. We are calling it the uh, dipoles. Uh, these dipoles are like magnets because they have north pole and they have a um, south pole. Now, it is these dipoles that differentiate between magnetic material, a magnet, and a non-magnetic material. A magnet has all the dipoles facing in one direction. A magnet has all the dipoles facing in one direction. A magnetic material that is not a magnet such as iron they have dipoles, but these dipoles are facing in a random direction. That is why, if you try to align them, we will say you are magnetizing that particular um, magnetic material. Now, non-magnetic materials such as aluminium, a piece of wood, name them, they lack dipoles. They lack dipoles. That is why you will be asked a question why is it not possible to magnetize aluminium you will never make aluminium to be a magnet no matter what what's happening here is you will never make it because it lacks dipoles it lacks dipoles yes i can um, show you in form of a diagram this is a a magnetic material that is not magnetized so you see we have a, a region like this eh? that's a domain another domain here domain is here you know you, you see now those regions are domains but inside the domain uh, we have dipoles and this look at this particular domain its dipoles are facing this direction these are the uh, domain the dipoles inside are facing up so each dipoles in a given domain are facing in their own direction so it is unmagnetized the dipoles have an arrow. The, uh, the, uh, the side having the arrow is the north pole. 
the opposite of the arrow, the other side is the south pole. So if you can manage to align using whatever means you, 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 you will discover, if you can align all these dipoles, then the side that they are facing would be the north pole and the, the other side would be the south pole. Remember, a magnet is fully um, described when it has both the north pole and the south pole. That is all I can tell you. Now look at this. When you arrange or when you align all the dipoles, like you can see here, uh, where the dipoles are facing, that is the north pole. The other side, opposite of the um, arrow, is where we will call it the south pole. And that is it. So in summary, look at this. Mm, the first case, A, an and, uh, unmagnetized state, so the dipoles are facing random direction, you can see. They, they are facing in random direction. Uh, magnetized state, they have tried. It's not fully magnetized, but, it, you know, the dipoles are, are, are somehow facing in one direction, in a common direction. Uh, the saturated state, now all the dipoles are fully facing in a given direction. This also explains why when you magnetize a given magnetic material, it will reach a saturated. The strength of the magnet becomes constant. Why? Because all the dipoles are already uh, aligned. That is, the magnet now, or the magnetic material, is fully magnetized. You get me? Uh, you have been given a, a note here that during magnetic process, the dipoles are aligned, made to face in a common direction. Magnetic saturation, a state where all domains are aligned in one direction. At this point, magnetism is maximum you will never go beyond that even if you continue with the process of magnetization the strength remains constant reason being all the dipoles are now fully magnetized i want to take you through the process of magnetization and demagnetization in the next few minutes uh, first of all, what is a magnetization? It is the process of making a magnet from a magnetic material. Very simple. Just be very keen. From a magnetic material. Not any material can make a magnet. It is only those which are magnetic. During that process now, uh, that we are calling it magnetization, it is a process whereby we are aligning the dipoles. Uh, When you have aligned them now, you have made a magnet. It, you, it can either be a permanent or a temporary magnet, but all in all, it's a magnet. Uh, when a material is, look at this statement, very nice one. When a material is fully magnetized, all the domains are aligned in one direction. That is what I was telling you, a uh, magnetic saturation. We have very many methods that we can use to magnetize a magnetic material. But in our case, we are only going to consider four. Induction stroking hammering in north south direction electrical method using direct current there's something i want you to hear me very well uh when you ask in exam state four ways or four methods of magnetization induction you will get it stroking you will get it hammering if, if you just write the word hammering you will not get it right unless you specify hammering in north south direction reason being hammering can also be used as a method of a demagnetization so when you say hammering we don't know whether you wanted to demagnetize or magnetize so the best thing that you do here is you do what you specify hammering in north south direction um the other one is electrical method using direct current if you just try electrical method you will never score it because you know we have two types of current direct current and alternating current unless you commit yourself that electrical method using direct current you will never score why 
just talking about electrical methods i don't know whether you wanted to uh, demagnetize or magnetize because alternating garden is used to demagnetize a magnet it is used to make a magnet lose its magnetism but if you want to make a magnetic material become a magnet or acquire magnetism then we use direct current so electrical method using direct current the main one is electrical method that's why uh, we have it here using a direct current i will show you a diagram then explains to you when you allow current you know let me show you the setup this one here mm, you can see it uh of course you, you you can see the cell or the battery here i am praying to god that you know where the current flows from and i also still praying to god that you know the positive side of the cell or the negative terminal of that cell we learned this in um, the last topic form one that is cells and symbol circuits the longer or the longest terminal as you can see here is the positive the negative uh, the shorter one is the negative the current flows from the positive in this manner the electrons flows in the opposite direction to the flow of current you know the flow of electrons constitutes the flow of current and they flow in opposite direction a uh, current flows from the positive terminal of the cell then it flows in this direction the electrons flows from the uh, negative which is the shortest terminal in this particular manner in our case we have a steel bar steel is a magnetic material so we have the ability or it is possible for us to magnetize steel now mm, how after allowing the current to flow after allowing the current to flow you close the switch you allow the current to flow this particular steel bar acquires magnetism because the current flowing you know we have met a solenoid we have met this wire the one that is carrying the current to make some turns on the steel so as the current is flowing that current has an effect of making sure the dipoles are aligned they have that given power you will notice better when we shall be talking about um, magnetic effect of electric current the dipoles are being aligned by the flowing current a flowing current has magnetic effect that they would use it to align the dipoles but for now just to note that the flowing current will do what will align the dipoles after all the dipoles are aligned that's a magnet and that's what we have said that is electrical current that, and that is direct current that's why here even uh, i've indicated the direct current not ac uh, now you cannot make a magnet then you fail to tell us the, where is the not pole part or the not pole of this magnet you have to give us um we have two methods we have the clock rule and the right hand grip rule but i'm going to explain to you the right hand grip rule you have your right hand like mine this is my right hand uh, i thank god i have uh, five fingers but i'm told this one this is not a finger it's called a thumb this one this mutaki kosa na mambe kidole you send somebody nilete anakata na mambia to kutana the same place the same thing you i will do the same thing to you kidole the thumb uh we have now the the what the four fingers kidole cha e indio the kidole cha shahada kidole cha hey hey Mbona ni mejilete mashida. Mm, najua hii kido, eh, kidole cha pete. Ki dole cha kati. Kidole cha kati. Kidole cha shahada. <laughs> kidole ndogo ndio hii. <laughs> so now uh, your fingers will tell you. So you are supposed to encycle this uh, turns. You imagine that you are crapping or cris eh? you are creeping with your fingers pointing in the direction of the flow of current 
then where your thumb will be pointing, that will be the north pole. I will show you. That is called the right hand grip rule. First of all, um, look at this. Eh? Uh, no, leave alone the clock rule. I will not explain to you the clock rule. Let me just explain to you the um, right hand grip rule. Clock rule is a very simple thing that uh, it's not supposed to bother you. Now, look here. Right hand grip rule for a current carrying coil. A current carrying coil. So, again, let me be very specific. Right hand grip rule 4. By then, because I. I I'm going to take you all through the Form 2 syllabus and I'm going to provide for you all these slides. We are going to mention right hand five times. We are going to mention this right hand five times. And this is the first time. And uh, we can use our right hand in different ways. Now in this case, right hand grip rule for a current carrying coil. For a current carrying coil. For a current carrying coil. Later on I will show you right hand grip rule for a straight current carrying conductor a right hand grip rule for a loop but in this case i'm very specific right hand grip rule for a current carrying coil which states that if a coil carrying a current is grasped grasp is grip in the right hand such that the fingers point in the direction of current in the coil then the thumb, Kidole, points in the direction of the North Pole. I will show you. First of all, you must know how to state this right hand grip rule for a, a current carrying coil because you will be asked. Now look at this. That is somebody's hand. And I jaribu kuhishika with in such a way that the fingers points in the direction of the current. The thumb is here. You can see the thumb here. So this side is the North Pole. This side will be the North Pole. We will still and you have to practice this you just have to practice and uh i was teaching some people and uh, i don't know whether they are people or students and um somebody had a rough time to identify the right hand you think it's a joke so she had to do some practice this way then i can realize um this is my right hand i know you, when you are, you are viewing me it's like you know it's a screen so maybe my hand is laterally inverted but my right hand is this one so i will use my if you use a wrong hand it will give you opposite results so be specific on the hand because later on again we shall be using our left hand so you need to know when are we using this uh look at this note allowing the current to flow for a long time does not increase the extent of magnetic saturation it only causes overheating of the solenoid which adversely affects magnetism heat affects a magnet eh? it can destroy a magnetism of a magnet so don't allow the current to flow for too long thinking that you will get a very strong magnet after magnetic saturation is reached don't bother adding more current it will do nothing a solenoid is a coil with many tons of insulated copper wire that's a note that you, uh, it's like this one eh? a solenoid you know it's a, a is a coil with many tons of insulated copper wire no problem with that we use copper because it allows current to flow. Mm. So uh, you will, I will still give you exercise. Eh? At the end of this, I will give you some uh, exercise so that you will try to identify North Pole and uh, South Pole. Uh, I will share with you my website so that uh, you will be getting questions there. Uh, it's almost done. I will share with you. Uh, in an experiment to magnetize two substance x and y using a current two curves were obtained as shown explain the difference between x and y explain the difference between x and y uh the two the two mm, we have time then we have uh, magnetizing current so it's an exercise that I, I just want you to look at it mm, you also have your notes you know, I told you that there is an exercise and then there is teaching. So when we meet with a with question like this, it is you to try to answer it. Eh? So now explain the difference between X and Y. Yeah, explain the difference between X and Y. Just look. Different time, different magnetizing current. Uh, those, uh, X and Y are two magnetic materials. They have been magnetized. Can you brainstorm that question? 
can you brainstorm that question another one to brainstorm explain the shape of the cover at point a b why is the strength becoming constant brainstorm the question brainstorm that question ah so we have another method number two hammering in north south direction hammering is a mechanical method a lot of strength is used but you will acquire a very weak magnet by the way electrical method using direct current is the only one that gives us a very strong magnet the rest that is hammering induction and uh, the other one was we have hammering induction stroking the three of them gives us a very weak magnet but uh, electrical method gives us a very strong magnet if you want to get a strong magnet use electrical method in a uh, direct current this one is more of african you know africans we love um, mechanical things we we love using our strength so um it takes advantage of the earth magnetic field so you simply place a magnetic ma material in a north south direction and then you hammer it very many times until it the dipoles somehow aligns itself with the earth magnetic field then you will obtain a magnet disclaimer is a very weak magnet induction induction is a very temporary form of a magnet when you place a magnetic material onto a magnet it temporarily acquires magnetism look at this my friend this is a magnet not pull then a nail has been placed so that nail when you place another nail on that nail it gets attracted to this nail meaning this first nail is a magnet as long as it can attract then it's a magnet yes so uh this part of the nail that is in contact with the magnet now north pole is uh, perceived to be a south pole you know it's just a south pole for some time and uh, until the contact is broken and let me tell you this always induction in magnetism is as a result of conduct if there is no conduct please there is no induction there don't relate to the one for electrostatics no this one is specifically for magnetism there must be a conduct you hear me say yes uh look at this we have south pole so you place a nail here this part of the nail acquires north pole this other side acquires uh, south pole you place another nail on the same same south pole then the ends of the nails will also acquire similar polarity that's why we have repulsion here get that very clear induction also gives a weak temporary magnet stroking we have two methods we have single stroking double stroking um there is another video i the i i actually demonstrated stroking kindly just mm, it's close with these videos that you are watching eh? It's just around but it was uh, some years back uh, I, I just demonstrated how stroking takes place both sinkhole and double stroking so you don't have to worry just check on it sinkhole stroking we use one magnet uh, we have the material to be magnetized and we have the magnet you pull you pull the, these other magnets along the material to be magnetized continuous for many times kivikaba unainua ju don't be pulling it on the same unaifutia ikienda ikirudi no you will be magnetizing the magnetizing magnetizing the magnetizing no you pull it from one side kivika huku unainua ju unaenda tena unaanzia the other side the process continues the more number of strokes the more it becomes stronger how do you identify the polarities look at this uh, i'm stroking using it is the south pole that is in contact with the material to be magnetized so the end here the end the end i'm stroking from this side this way the end here acquires opposite polarities so if this part is south pole this part will become north pole look when we are using um uh, okay there's a disadvantage here it produces a magnet in which one 
pole is nearer to the a a end of the magnetized material than the other. This disadvantage can be avoided by use of double stroke. I know you know um sometimes you lift your magnet, you take it here, and uh, at many times it may not start at the end. It starts somewhere here. That is what they are trying to explain here. A uh, single stroke joy we use two magnets, all of them starting at the center, and then you stroke this again. The other one goes this direction. At the end, you will obtain a north pole, south pole, because this magnet here is south, and this part is south. But if you work with north north like this one, you will obtain a magnet, a very funny one. Uh, with south poles at the hands and the, at, the, at the middle we have north pole north pole what do you do in this case you break the magnet at the center so that you can obtain a normal magnet with north and south poles good exercise with the aid of a diagram explain how you would uh, magnetize a steel bar so as to obtain south pole at the marked end of the bar by using permanent magnet using an electric current which of the above method produces a stronger magnet i've given you that also give us the method and give a reason why or which one will give a stronger magnet the magnetization i'm not going to waste time here the mag uh, the methods most of the methods we use to magnetize we also use to demagnetize we have a uh, electrical method using alternating current when alternating current flows through a, 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 conda, a, a magnet, it disorients the magnetic dipoles. We have hammering. Hammering in north, uh, sorry, in east-west direction disorients also the you know the um, dipoles. When you hammer in north-south direction during magnetization, the dipoles gain kinetic energy and they align as per the Earth's magnetic field. When you place it in east-west direction, then you hammer it seriously. Um, it uh, it disorients the dipoles you can also heat you put it in a fire you heat you, you raise the temperature um the dipoles will get disoriented so let's not uh, stay there so much but a magnet even without applying to what i've said will also demagnetize itself we call it the self demagnetization it takes place if a magnet is not stored properly that's why we have to store a magnet in a special way all this we have mention it there eh? um the all this we have explained but you can still read through if you can uh, if, if, if you want to get a point uh before we look at how to store a magnet before we look at how to store a magnet uh magnetic materials are categorized into two we have soft magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials soft magnetic materials hard magnetic materials soft magnetic materials are the ones that uh, can be magnetized easily but also loses their magnetism easily they can be magnetized easily and also loses their magnetism easily that is the point they you know when you try to magnetize them they get magnetized very fast but they also lose it very fast. Uh, for uh, uh, the main example of a soft magnetic material is iron. Is iron. Applications include now this iron, which is a soft magnetic material, it can be used in making of electromagnets, making transformer cores used for magnetic shielding. Let's look at um, the hard magnetic material. It is opposite. They, or it is difficult to magnetize the hard magnetic materials, but also after getting magnetized, they don't lose their magnetism easily. They are being used to making of permanent magnets. An example is a steel used to make permanent magnets. Now look at how we store a magnet. We store it in a special way. We use magnetic keepers. This one, uh, this, this is a keeper. This one the one i'm showing eh? they don't have polarities but they are just magnetic when you place you know ma magnets are stored in pairs um inside the magnet we put a 
non-magnetic material like a piece of wood this one like a piece of wood and then we store with the opposite polarities facing each other south north keeper keeper the keepers forms a complete loop that prevents or that uh, controls self-demagnetization that is the point um, so lastly let's look at the uses of our magnets they are used in hospitals for removing pieces of iron from the eyes of patients that one is uh, a direct one used in industries as styras lifting uh, iron scrap metals weather stations for resetting six max, uh, minimum and maximum thermometer navigation for showing direction as in compass needles this was the first use of a magnet magnetic tapes used in audio and video recorders i'm presenting to you some questions for you uh, i'm sharing with you the screen copy those questions in that case we have question one to question four so you simply post the, the video and copy the questions answer them then if there is one that you cannot please take it to your physics teacher another one post the screen copy the questions post the screen copy the questions continue just post the screen and do what and copy the questions uh, and answer them so that is it uh, we shall continue I've done a favor I've taught you through magnetism uh, I request you continue watching ambassador foundation for physics and chemistry and life lessons um, you can share subscribe you know that is what I expect from your side for me I'm presenting to you the lesson have a nice time may God bless you